Hi, it's Dr. Saab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the main features of this Renault Austral. This video is perfect if you've just bought the new Austral or if you're thinking about buying one. This is the new 2023-2024 Renault Austral Iconic Alpine version. I'll be showing different versions of this car as well. Check out the video in the top right corner if you want to see a comparison video of all three models of the Renault Austral. Big thank you to Holcroft Renault Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. So in this video I'm going to be showing you this particular model which is the high spec model and you'll also see the video of this standard car. Now the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to fuel the car. So you can lock the car, unlock the car from the key. Now you can open the tailgate as well. And you can even put the lights on if you want to, which is quite useful. But if you're walking towards a car, it will actually open up, which is quite a useful feature. And you can tell that it's open because the electric windows have opened. And then to fuel the car, all you do is push here. And that opens the fuel flap. And now you can fuel your car. And here you've got your what fuel the car can take. Once you're finished, just close this, push that forward, and then you can walk away from the car and it will lock itself. So if I walk away, you can see that's locked. Now again, as long as the car is open, ignore the suitcase, that's my video equipment. What you can do is push a button here, and that'll open the tailgate. And now you've got access to the rear and you've got uh, your carry hook here. If you pull this section, you can then fit a bag in between that and that'll just keep that upright. And then you've also got uh, on the other side, your 12 volt socket, uh, carry hook to put loose a bag and loose items of stuff on there. And then ignore the carpets. Uh, this car is brand new, so it's not been fitted with the carpets or the hubcaps for the wheels. And under here we have storage and you've also got the repair puncher kit. So if you do need to inflate your tyres you've got the option there. You've also got storage on the side and you've also got uh, your tether points there on both sides. This parcel shelf does come off as well if you need it to. Just take it off from here. And the seats do also fold down. If you want to see what that looks like, check out my specification video. You can find that on the top right corner there or in the description. What you can do is as well, you can set the height of the tailgate. So if you find that that's too high, because this car's got the electric tailgate, what you can do is push this button, stop it. So let's say I want to stop it there. All I'll do is press and hold this button Now that beep is to say, this is the new opening position for the tailgate. So every time it opens up, it'll open to that position. If you do want to set it back to the original height, just push it to the top, press and hold this button. And now that beep is to say, that's the new opening position for the tailgate. Now, if you want to close the tailgate, just press this button and that'll close that up for you. You can also open the tailgate by pressing this button and that'll hold, open it up. And if I press it again, will that close it? Yep. You do have to hold it. Just keep holding it and then it will close. So let's try that again. Keep holding it and that will now close the tailgate. Now on the standard model, as long as you've got the key on your pocket, you just have to press a button down here and then you have to pull it because this car doesn't have the electric tailgates. So you've got gas struts, so it's just a traditional opening. Now I'm not gonna show you the trunk of this car because it is just got stuff. Once you finish, you wanna close the boot or the trunk as the Americans like to say, hold this, pull this down, and that will now close the rear tailgate. So that's how you do it on a car that's got a manual tailgate. Now I'm gonna show you the rear. So you have got the child uh, locks here, and if you push this down, that means the child locks are on. 
If I push it up, that means the child locks are off. At the rear, you've got the electric windows, a bit of storage, and you've also got your storage nets here. You've got two USB-C ports as well. And you've also got the ISOFIX for both seats. And you've got the adjustable headrests, which move up and down. Now this car's got the panoramic sunroof, so that's why you've got the glass uh, sunroof up there. You can adjust the seats. You can adjust the seats to go forward or backwards. And I've shown you how to do that in my specification video. And I've also shown you how to fold the seats by pulling this. So if you want to see what that looks like, check out the specification video in the description. And shall we move to the front? So I can show you what the controls are like there. Now we're in the top spec model again. And on the front, you'll see you got the electric windows. And this is the same for the standard car as well. Uh, you've got the Harman card on, which is the optional extra on this car. Oh, that's quite a nice touch. You've got the black door handles there. You've got storage under here. And then for the seats, you can adjust the seats electronically in this particular car. And all you do is adjust. You've got lots of different adjustability. You can see you can raise the seat there, decrease it, move it forward and backwards like that. You've got your lumbar support as well. And then this button is for your massage seats. I will jump into the standard model very shortly. But just before I do, uh, I just want to show you that this button is slightly different to the standard model where you get uh, the adaptive cruise control. And if you press that, I can just adjust the distance between when you use the adaptive cruise control. And then you've also got a big panoramic sunroof. Now to just push forward, and that will close the electric blind. And then if you want to open it, just press it like so, and that'll open the electric blind. So I recommend closing the electric blind on a hot day when you leave the car. And then when you come back, you could open it up. Uh, only because when you've closed the electric blind, that should prevent the car to getting too hot. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video showing how to use the cruise control systems, including the adaptive cruise control. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do it on the standard car as well. Now I'm sat in the standard car and here we've got the controls to adjust the mirrors. Just choose which side you want to adjust the mirrors and adjust the mirrors using the arrows here. Press this button, that will close the mirrors, fold them and open them. And then you've got the electric windows. And for the rear passengers, if you do want to lock the rear passenger windows, I press that button there. And you get a little warning there just saying that the rear windows are locked. If I press that again, I'll unlock it. And you can see it says unlocked. Got some storage down here as well. And you'll notice on the standard car, you do get manual seats. So to adjust the seats, you can see it's all manual. And I can adjust the different bits here. And I've got to uh, move the seat forward and backwards. Just pull this up, move it forward and backwards. To adjust the steering, you've got a little lever down here. You've also got a lever down here. And that can, if you pull that down, push it, move the steering forwards or backwards and adjust it to what position you want. I'll say there. Close that just like that. One thing to note is that this is a standard feature. It is a manually operated steering wheel. So you do have to adjust it manually for both the top spec car. It's not electric. You have to do it manually here. Now what I'm gonna do next is start the car up, push the brake, press the start switch, and that will start the car. And when it says ready, that means now I can drive the car. Now I have got some buttons down here. So this one is for, I think, the cruise control. This one is to switch off the traction control. And then this one is for your lane keeping system. And at the moment, you can see it's not configured. You do have to configure it on the screen here. If you're getting this message, the lane keeping not configured, please watch my video on the top right corner on how to fix this. And then below that, we have got the electric hold function. So this button is for your handbrake. If you push the brake, and push this that will now release the handbrake and you can see 
the handbrake is released. And if I pull this, you see a little light, and then that means that the handbrake light is on, and you can see there on the cockpit. Now the one next to that, this is the hold function, and I'll show you that in a sec, what the hold function does. If you do want to put the car into drive, all you do is push the brake, pull this stalk down, and you'll notice now it's in drive. If I touch it just slightly, that puts the car into neutral. All the way down, back to drive, but if I put all the way up, that now engages reverse, and I also get the reverse camera and this car's got the reverse parking sensors there. So that's picking that up there. You have got front sensors as well. And then with the reverse camera, that red line means that's the end of the car. So don't go past that red line. Uh, this yellow line is the recommended gap that you should leave. Ideally, if you could leave the gap, uh, that green, where that green line is, that's perfect. That'll give enough access for anyone in a wheelchair to go around or a ramp. And then these are guidelines as well. So if you do turn the steering, you can see the blue lines of where the car is going to travel to. So you've got that option there. And I'll just show you what that looks like if I reverse it a bit more. Stop there. What you need to do is press this button here. And now that'll put the car into park. And you'll notice the handbrake has come on by itself. So you can do it manually if you want to down here. But uh, if you put the car to park and then switch the car off, you can see all you need to do is just make sure the P sign is there. And now you can leave the car. And while I'm outside, I just want to show you the gap. And you'll see plenty of gap uh, between uh, the vehicles as well. Let's start the car up again, push the brake, press start switch. So you can see when it says ready, that means it's ready to drive. Now I've put my seatbelt on. If I put the car into drive and press the accelerator pedal, that now releases the handbrake as well. So you don't have to, again, press the button down there. Uh, you can automatically release the handbrake when you touch the accelerator pedal. And you'll notice as you're driving, if you come to a stop, a gently stop and then if you push the brake now you'll notice the letter A and the letter A is to tell you that the hold function is on and now you can relax your feet and when you're ready to go all you'll do is press the accelerator pedal and that'll release the brake and you can carry on so that is a really useful function I'm just gonna put the car back Let's leave it there. Put the car back into park and you can see the handbrake lights come on. And you can see up here which gear you're in. So I'm in park. Now next thing I'm gonna show you is under the gear selector stalk, you have got the wiper stalks as here. And here you can then put the wipers on by pushing all the way down. That's manual mode. And that's a slower manual mode. And then you've got auto mode as well. Now, if you twist this one, that will put the rear wiper on and I'll be automatic wiper mode. The three dots mean that that's automatic mode. And if you press that all the way around, now the wipers will just be constantly on. I'm just going to switch that off. If you twist this, this actually changes the uh, how responsive the wipers are. So if you do want it to be slow all the way down, and if you want it up to the fastest, we're constantly wiping, uh, just twist it all the way up like that. And then you've also got, if you pull, that'll clean your windscreen. And if you push forward, that actually cleans the rear windscreen for you. And then below that, we have got the volume controls. So you can adjust the volume of the radio here, push these together, that's a mute, and you can adjust uh, the different sources here and you can change the modes here as well and you've also got a rotary dial so you if you don't want to touch the screen you can rotate a little dial behind here now on the other side we have got the lights and you've got auto mode side lights full beams and you can see a little symbol there telling you what lights you've got on 
So if you need to, you can put your fog lights on by twisting. If you want to cancel it, press down. I'm not sure why you've got the option of going up. Let me know in the comments if you know what that is. But you've also got your indicator stalk here as well. When the lights are on, if you push the stalk forward, then you've got the auto beam function as well. So they'll automatically dip. You will need to set the lights to auto mode as well. Now behind the steering, you do also have paddles. And these paddles aren't to change gear. They're actually to change the regenerative braking system. This is only available for hybrid models. You'll notice if I press plus 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 there's the regenerative braking and if I press the minus you'll notice that changes so if I press plus that is decreasing and if I press minus that increases it and what that does is when you increase or decrease basically you've got one foot braking what you could do if you wanted to brake as long as it's on the high setting you can actually drive the car let go of the accelerator pedal and then the car will actually stop braking for you and what's happening is it's actually charging your battery now it won't come to a full stop so you will have to press the brakes to actually come to a full stop but it is a very relaxing drive i find when it's on the full uh, braking system let me know in the comments how do you prefer to drive your car do you like using the regenerative brake system hybrids allow you to do this if you have a non-hybrid then the paddles are actually used to change gears now moving to the steering wheel we have got the buttons here for the cruise control and speed limiter so this button is for your speed limiter this button is for your cruise control and to set it you just press plus and minus just like so and then this button this button basically pauses the systems this button is for the road sign recognition feature now on the other side you've got some buttons here this button is to answer calls this is your favorites button and then if you press this button that allows you to have access to google voice assistant so you can ask google questions if you want to and you can even ask the car to do stuff for you. I think you can ask the car to put heated seats on. Let me know in the comments if this does work. Now, if you press and hold this button, then what you can do is actually use some basic functions on your phone, such as sending a text message or phoning someone. Now, this button is to answer or decline calls. Uh, this is for your Google Assistant. This is your favorites button. This button, if you press this, We'll change the view on here. So you'll notice I've got a different layout on the screen. And if I press view again, that changes it to a more kind of classic look. Very useful on a motorway maybe. If I press view again, that changes it to this particular screen. And if I press the, the up and down button here, you'll notice I can now adjust different things on the screen there so I can see all uh, that good stuff if I press view again I still have those options if I want to see that press view again and again I've still got those options on the right hand side which is nice hmm. I want, let me know what you guys which screen you guys prefer you can get google maps on here as well now i do need to set up the car you've also got just under the steering you also have the multi-sense button now if i press the multi-sense button you can see the car goes from eco comfort eco sport and perso and perso means it's uh, you can customize the steering feel and how the uh, car reacts and stuff like that. I'll show you how to do that a bit later on Just Stick it back in comfort and you'll notice when you do change the different modes the ambient lights in the car do change So that's eco that's sport and you'll notice the ambient lights on the side of the door on the front here as well and on the side of the door now while looking at the instrument cluster you can see that you've got your lights on here, you've got your speed here. Down here, you've got how much fuel the car's got and the range as well. And then you can see what driving mode you're in. 
and then you can also see how much charge is in the battery so you can see mine's about half but because you don't need to worry about plugging this in the car will charge itself so the engine will charge the car for you as well as the regenerative braking seem like auto wipers are on as well and then ready just means the car's ready to drive so i can put the car into drive and you can see right now it's in ev mode so you've got that information there and you can see whichever view you do you've still got the main information in front of you that foot is just to tell you that you need to press the brake to then change the car to drive or reverse you do have the head-up display as well which will display your speed and even which way to travel when you've set the sat nav up which is very useful now i'm going to end the video here mainly because it was going to be a bit too long so next week what i'll do is create a part two video which will show you how to use the main controls on the infotainment screen and some other useful features that this car has that i haven't gone through please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow and create even more content please like this video also comment if you have any suggestions or questions Check out the Renault playlist for more videos related to the Austral, including a full video on what specification this car has. Some of the videos in the playlist may be of other models, but the features should be the same. So hopefully it helps you out too. There is a new thanks feature. If you want to donate to the channel, then please feel free to use this feature and any money raised through YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Thanks for watching.